Welcome to a large model showman's engine part 74, fitting a new injector with a low water feed capacity and considering lowering the point where the water enters the boiler to prevent it from cooling the steam. Just in case you don't know what you're looking at, it's the water injection system of this traction engine. It's a four and a half inch scale traction engine and it's quite big. I've had problems with the injector fitted to this engine ever since I got it. So much so that I phoned my friend David English and bought another one, because this is a Jubilee fittings injector. When I think about it, over the years I've only ever used Jubilee fittings injectors and never had any problems. This is an old number 8 injector, and I bought a new number 8 injector. And when I fitted the new number 8 injector to the traction engine, the problem remained. It was exactly the same as with the old one. I'm pretty sure that there is nothing at all wrong with these injectors, it is something else. I've redone the water inlet supply. The top pipe in this photograph is the steam pipe, and when I open the steam valve in the bunker, a high volume, large amount of steam comes out of this pipe. If you've been following this series, you'll also be aware that I modified the check valve. Originally it was causing a bit of a bottleneck, but it's not now. The last steam test, and I videoed this, was a bit of a disaster because the ash pan was blocked up. And because of the lack of steam pressure, the injector was very reluctant to start. My diagnosis on this problem, helped by conversations with various friends and people in the business, caused me to come to the conclusion that the injector's capacity was too high for the boiler, and also the check valve is in the steam space, not in the water space. From my experience, mainly of steam locomotives, check valves are normally halfway up the barrel or on the back head. On this traction engine, as you can see in this clip, the check valves are quite high up on the boiler. And if the water level in the boiler was above the check valve, then there wouldn't be any point in injecting anyway. I should have realised what the problem was when I think back to when I was testing the steam pump, the boiler was almost full, and at that point I used the injector and it did work okay. A little bit too well though. A fountain of water shot up the chimney. The boiler was over full. To make it worse, the check valve is quite near the steam takeoff to the injector. And when the number 8 injector starts to pump the water via the check valve into the boiler, it cools the steam that's been supplied to the injector. And I think this is what stops the injector from working. I spoke to my friend David English at Jubilee Fittings to inquire about a lower capacity injector, but unfortunately the smaller injectors are designed for smaller pipe. A few weeks ago I was visiting my friends at the steam workshop and I looked at some injectors that were being made. These injectors are made by John Holroyd and they resemble a Penberthy injector, which are the type that are normally fitted to traction engines. So I bought one and went over there a couple of weeks later to pick this up. And when I was there, I noticed a traction engine that was a 4-inch scale traction engine with one of these fitted. The boiler on this traction engine was the same size and design as the one on my 4.5-inch scale traction engine. And John's injector worked perfectly on it. When it was ready, I was sent this short video showing it being tested. If it works as well as that of my traction engine, I'll be very happy. This injector is different to the Jubilee fittings type in as much as it's a one-piece casting, not a fabrication. I can't say that these injectors are cheap, but to be honest, after all this messing about, if it works, I'm really not bothered. Take the time to read the card, guaranteed for life, and if you read the other side, there's some interesting information, but I didn't show that. The three pipe fittings are still in the box, and very shortly the union nuts will also be in the box because I already have piping on the engine. My traction engine runs at a maximum working pressure of 110 pounds per square inch. That's quite a low pressure for a large traction engine, and you can see that it says LP on the cone at the top. I really do think this one will work, but I have a bit of plumbing to do. Plus, I'm going to fit an extension pipe to the check valve, which goes down into the boiler slightly. I was going to paint this, but I quite like it as it is. I also like the style and design of the number 8 Jubilee fittings injector. 
The egg-shaped part behind the injector is a check valve. I removed the ball from the main check valve and I'm using this as an inlet from the steam pump as well as the main check valve from the boiler. When I fit the injector and open the water valve, you can see water runs out of it. But water is also dripping from the nut around the water inlet to the injector. I think I need to tighten that. I need to reroute the piping from the check valve on the boiler down to the new injector. And I hate to say it, but this job is beyond me. I cannot do this single-handedly. I'm wondering if any of my viewers live in East Yorkshire and want to come and give me a hand with this. If anyone's interested, the pay won't be very high, but you'll learn a lot. I could, of course, ask my 14-year-old grandson, who was very good at maths, general knowledge and computers, but I don't think that's going to happen. He can't figure out how to fit a twist drill into the hand-operated chuck of my Bosch small drill. Originally, I enlarged the hole to 3 8 so that it was in line with the hole in the bush on the boiler. But thankfully, further into the check valve casting, I drilled the hole, which just happened to be tapping size for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. Here I'm threading the hole, and in this clip using my airline, I'm blowing away any swarf. I then thought to myself, all I need to do now is thread a piece of 5 16 copper pipe, and here I'm doing that in the lathe, using a twist drill to stop the chuck from crushing the tube. And I used 3 in 1 oil as a cutting lubricant, which I sprayed on the copper part. It was a very simple job using my tailstock die holder to cut a thread on the piece of copper pipe, but unfortunately there was a bit of a problem. The piece of pipe that I used has an outside diameter of 3 eighths of an inch, but it's the thin walled type. When I cut the thread it was incredibly weak, and the last thing I want is for this pipe to break and drop into the boiler. I initially fitted the tube using a pair of pliers and it sheared off. That wasn't a problem at this stage, I just used an extractor to get rid of the bit that was stuck in the hole. I'm glad this happened though because it gave me a bit of time to look at this unit and made me realise I could easily fit an o-ring seal which will be a good idea. When I came out of the workshop and had a look on my computer, oddly enough a viewer had suggested using o-ring seals on check valves. A strange coincidence. Anyway that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.